Can you smell it? Can you smell that? No, it's not what The Rock is cooking. It smells like another day, beautiful day, for a podcast on the morning of the NBA Finals, June the 2nd, 2016. I'm your host, your humble host. The diligent, vigilant, meticulous, sagacious, conscientious, analytical, methodical individual. I am the Chiseled Adonis. Let's get into it. I don't want every belt came with the shoes. I don't want every title. I never lose. Clearance to clean it now. Make moves and we clean it house. Long live the legends of every profession. Is that what we scream about? Big shout out to Oso Bully Vance for letting me use his song in my opening. Good friend of mine. We play high school football together. We always go to the gym together. So it was a no-brainer to take his music and put it in my opening. If you want to hear the full track, I'll have it in the de description below to the Facebook page and also the SoundCloud page. So go on and support your boy. We got a lot of stuff we got to talk about today. First, I want to hop into the gorilla getting shot and the jackass mother who dropped the damn child in there. Well, technically she ain't drop it, but she might as well. If you're just gonna let your kid walk around willy-nilly in the damn zoo, you might as well have just dropped or dropped a goddamn care package into the gorilla cage. Retard. Number two, we're gonna talk about this super Pokemon legendary Yu-Gi-Oh card goddamn gator in Florida. 15 inch gate, no, 15 inch, 15 feet. How, who fed this thing? Number three, we're going to talk about some Chinese restaurants that got rats up in there. Number four, the schema of the day. Actually, the man will be the man of the hour tonight. Not Steph Curry, not LeBron James, not Klay Thompson, not Kevin Love, not Kyrie Irving, but Anderson Varejao. And I'll tell you why. But first, let's talk about this doggone gorilla getting shot. Oh. Mommy's right here. Who's done? Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, everybody back up. The mother is a jackass. You too busy, probably on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, whatever the case may be. How you lose your child in the zoo? Well, you know you got animals in there who fixing to rip somebody's head off. It don't make no damn sense. And mind you, the child ain't just falling. It, it crawled over the damn gate or whatever the barricade they might have had between human life and animal life. And you expect me to feel bad for you? And if you listen to the video, you hear her talk about mommy's dead, mommy's dead. She wasn't there. She up there mad comfortable. The child is who's in fear for their life. If I was a parent, I'm sorry, I heard a bunch of people talking about what they would have done. I'll tell you what I would have did in my Black Panther shirt. You like it? You like it? This is what I would have did. I'd have jumped my ass in there. Because I'm not going to wait for somebody to save my child. I'm going to save my child. So I found it real stupid. How are we going to sit over here and not blame the parent for what transpired? Because that's who should be public enemy number one. Not the park rangers. Not the people who was inside the zoo who was forced to make a tough decision to either kill an endangered species of, of these gorillas versus leaving the child to fend for itself. You had to choose the child over the gorilla. You would have never won in, public, in the public eye for letting the goddamn gorilla live. Then it was dragging that damn child around. It wasn't going to happen. Second, what I understand is how the media just going to throw the father's information out there. He wasn't even there. Talking about he has an extensive criminal record. My man wasn't even at the zoo. What about the mother? But she stay anonymous though. She stay anonymous though. That don't make no sense. She's the whole reason why the kid got inside there. Dude was probably at work, sitting at home. Eating some dinner at that time of day. What he got to do with the whole case? That man not even there, but you're talking about his criminal record. That's some old bullshit. Don't make no damn sense to me. The way I see it is, it makes sense to have shot the gorilla, but the woman should have jumped her ass in there to go protect her son. They should have shot her shit. Kid with that damn gorilla could have raised that baby much better than the mother could have. If you willingly let your child just walk over a damn barricade 
and jump into a pit of gorillas, I don't think you're suited to be a parent. Especially if the child is, what, three, four, five years old? How can they get that far away from you? Back when I was growing up, I couldn't get away from my parents. I could go across the street my father would be across the street faster than a car in a damn NASCAR. Don't make no damn sense. My mother would be across the street as slow as she walks. She wouldn't let me get to the other side of the street. But you're just going to let your child climb over a gate? How? How? Some, you get the Clorox for this week. Somebody needs to give you some goddamn Clorox. Swipe your Metro card. Find your way to Brooklyn. Take a plane to Brooklyn. Swipe your Metro card. Get on that L train. And just stay your ass on there. For, until the child 18 and the child can leave, stay your ass on the L train. Number two, this damn gator in Florida. Who made this shit? 15 feet gator, look at this shit. That is the biggest freaking alligator I have ever seen in my life. Jesus, they must be 15 feet long. Why, wow, you ever seen anything that big? No, never. I think that's two guys in an alligator suit. Now, I want you to put yourself in the mindset of these people who's recording this. I just came to play golf. That's the only reason why I'm here. I came to play golf. And I see this legendary dragon motherfucking Pokemon out here. Who let this dinosaur out the museum? Seriously, that ain't no regular alligator. You can't fool me, okay? Somebody done freed this shit, all right? That is a legendary Yu-Gi-Oh car. It, it's not no regular summon. Nah, that's a special summon right there. You got to sacrifice two of your monsters and a ritual summon to get that goddamn monster. That's a legendary Pokemon. Human dinosaur. Okay, maybe not human, but it's a big-ass dinosaur. I'm telling you, these motherfuckers was not dead. It was probably dormant under a bridge or something. You looking for Godzilla? I found it. It's walking around the damn golf course. Listen, if I was out there on the golf course with Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson, whoever it might have been, I'm running. Fuck the game. It's the dinosaur's game now. That crocodile, alligator, whatever it might have been. Motherfucker look like for alligator from Pokemon. Oh, you chose Totodile? Yeah, it done grew up, motherfucker. It done grew up. Whatever that gator wanted to do out there, you could do it. Gator probably walk around, this land is your land, this land is my land. No, no, it's your land now. I don't want no parts. You can have it. You know there was a photo circulating talking about, oh, um, stab the, um, stab the damn gator to death for $18 billion. Who's stabbing that thing? You need a nuke. Somebody need to go call Truman, drop a couple bombs on that shit like it was Japan. Who is stopping that gator? You think a bullet is going to pierce that skin? Hell no. It eats humans for living. I heard a flap of its tail could start a tsunami tonight. I'm not touching it. The whole Florida, I might not go to Florida. My original plan was to drive to Florida probably in the fall. Maybe go out there for WrestleMania next April. But I don't think I'm going to go anymore. Not if that gate is around walking. I don't care if it's in, Flo in Fort Lauderdale and I'm in Miami. It's in Florida. It's too close to me. I'd move to Wichita, Kansas before I go to Florida. Because of that doggone gate. I'm telling you right now, I'm not going over there. Some scary shit, man. Y'all worried about who going to be the next president. We should be worried about where's the brothers and sisters of this damn alligator. It's serious in these streets, man. I don't want my family to die. I got people in Florida. What if it escapes into the damn streets like that cow or, or goose? Well, not a goose. A goose ain't really too scary. But there was a cow that done freed itself somewhere. I can't remember the state, but it was running around in the streets. Random ass cow. Running with the traffic, you at the green light. You hit your gas, you see the cow look at you, it hits its milk and picks up some speed. Nah, fuck that, dog. These animals are wild. I ain't, I, I'm not saying kill them. I'm not saying that. Just like, you know, lure them somewhere where they could just run off the mat, you know? Just fucking run and then they fall off a cliff and they disappear. That'd be wonderful. 
Number three, rats in the goddamn restaurant. Look at this bullshit. This is unacceptable. And I guarantee you the outside of their store got an A on the front. I can guarantee you. Listen, how many times, how many times are they going to have situations where somebody can find a cooked rat instead of a chicken in their pork fried rice? It don't make no damn sense. If I order pork fried rice, why am I getting a hot rat? I'm not eating that shit. Mind you, there's about 20, 30, 40 photos. Of a goddamn person ordering some chicken, some pork, some fish, but they're getting some rat. I'm not dealing with it. I haven't eaten Chinese food in over two years. And within those two years, I probably ate it only once because my parents brought it home. Because they, they didn't want to cook that particular day. I don't eat fast food like that. I damn sure don't eat Chinese food like that. I'm not going, I'm not going to, I'm not going to fault Chinese or Asian people for eating rats because ultimately you can eat whatever you want to eat Just don't serve me that shit Because I eat some weird shit. I'm the same guy who eats. I'll eat ham together with Cheese mayonnaise and then I'll throw in a peanut butter and jelly in that one sandwiches to fuse two to make one I'm that guy. I eat some disgusting shit. I Eat my cereal with ice No milk just the cereal and ice. Shit tastes good to me. So if they like eating rats, no problem. But don't just serve me some shit. Don't be cooking something in the back and, and it's just running around like it's a pet. They probably got leashes on them shits. Hell no. I'm not eating it. Whatever restaurant this is at needs to be quarantined and cut off from the entire world. And mind you, they even look a little bit afraid. Like, you don't got to be afraid of... Of, of rats. I mean, I'm not. You don't gotta run around and jump whenever you see one. But that was about, I would say, 25. And you gotta wonder how many ran up while it was still dark inside the store. About 40 damn rats in there and you never budged? This is a super normality in the back then. I can't cook with no fork. You can't serve me no fork. You can't serve me no dish from the back knowing this is what's back there. Hell no. You better keep a universal light on. Because if they're coming out in the darkness, it better be lit up in that motherfucker 24-7. Not happening to me, boy. This is why I always sit at home and eat Top Ramen. Because you never got to worry about that shit. They may be having it inside the supermarkets, but they can't get inside the bag. At least I don't think so. But if they could, then I guess I've already been compromised and I'm well on my way to death. But I eat Top Ramen all the fucking time. Why? Because the shit on point. Put it in the microwave. Six minutes. Best food in your life. Don't go outside and go spend your money on goddamn halal food or uh, 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 McDonald's or uh, um, going to any other restaurant. Just buy you a $3 pack of like 12 Top Ramens and just eat that shit. You'll be all right. It'll satisfy your hunger and quench your thirst all in one city. That's my plug for Top Ramen. You should sponsor me. I eat your stuff all the time. Got me through college. And number four, our schema of the century. Anderson Barajal. My man played 31 games with the Cleveland Cavaliers. He played 33 with Golden State. He's guaranteed to get a ring no matter what the outcome might have been. The funny thing is that Cleveland probably sent him to Golden State as an informant to try to crumble them from the inside. And it worked out perfectly in the OKC series. Well, they were down 3-1. They just happened to come back. Now my man is guaranteed to get a ring no matter who wins. He's going to be doing the running man challenge in two weeks. Doesn't matter the outcome. He's probably going to be playing for both teams. He's going to catch a rebound and pass it to LeBron. Be like, oh shit, I forgot what team I was on. Then he's going to catch a rebound and assist it to Curry. He's going to go slide to the paint and make a dunk and look at Tyron Lou and smile. Because he knows he's going to win regardless. I've never seen some shit like this in my life. I hated Anderson Varejao. I hated him. 
Why? Because of the dude swinging hair, smiling, throwing elbows. You, everybody who knows me, I'm a Miami Heat fan. When Wade dunked all over him, I was the happiest man on the planet. I took that dunk and I probably dragged it for, I'd say, a year, maybe two years, just to talk bad about Anderson Varejo because I could not stand him. And here I, I find myself today applauding this man. You are the schema of the century. I guarantee you if Golden State were to lose the series, everybody inside going to be crying. This man going to have a big ass smile on his face. They can't even give him a press conference. If he sit down and say, what do you think about the loss? What loss? I'm winning. Charlie Sheen. Ridiculous. My man is winning. Winning. I'd also like to give a special thought. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my mother. She turned her. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my mother. Her birthday was two days ago. For those of you, I'd also like to give a special shout out to my mother. She turned. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my mother. Her birthday was two days ago. It was a very exciting time for her. If you'd like to know her age, I will give you a math equation. 17 multiplied by 3 minus 21 plus 27 multiplied by 0 plus 8 multiplied by 4 subtract 1 multiplied by 2. That is her age. If you can figure it out, comment it in the comment section below. You might be eligible for a shout out. And that does it for the podcast for today, episode 3. You know, I might start doing something a little bit different. What I think I might do is probably move over to SoundCloud and record the audio. But what I'm going to do is, it's probably going to go, uh, I think I want to try to extend it from maybe about 10, 15, 20 minutes. Get it to about 45 and then have the, visi the, the, visio, have the video of certain outtakes and post that to YouTube. I don't know what I want to do yet. I think I might post the entire thing on both. It depends. I have time. I'm going to create an outro as well. But I am your host, humble host, the diligent, vigilant, meticulous, and